polytechnic system has played a very important role in the socio-economic development of the country. The product of polytechnics is called technician. Technicians occupy middle level positions between engineer and craftsman. Polytechnics offer diploma programs which are normally of three years duration for 10 pass students. The curriculum of the programs which are offered in polytechnics is a plan comprising of all learning experiences to be given to the students for their professional development, personal development, social development and learning to learn development. All the more in the present time it also take care of the development of individuals as regards creativity and uh, humanism is concerned. We in this interactive and session we will try to understand the role of curriculum for the development of the polytechnics and the process of curriculum design. While doing this we will be taking into account the manpower requirements, education system, curriculum instruction, then the, the curriculum design process and the relevance of all these as regards the role of the teacher is concerned. Nation's prosperity is dependent on the human resources. It has been observed that in the advanced countries they have been able to have prosperity and well-being of the people by having certain interventions in the education system. In India also time to time we have tried to scan the requirement of the manpower and we have made adjustment in the education system thereby we could provide to the Indian system the required manpower uh, which is required for growth and development. The manpower requirement for any country can be divided in three parts as regards craftsmen, technicians and engineers are concerned. The engineers are the persons who, who are at the uh, level where they manage, uh, manage the system, do the research and development etc. while the technicians are working on the shop floor. As it is clear from the diagram, most of the technicians which are there, they are working on shop floor uh, operations and do the activities. Therefore, we have to see that while we are trying to decide about the curriculum of the polytechnic, what are the activities which are performed by the technicians in the field. In view of the manpower requirement uh, regarding the uh, technician system, we will have to see the uh, technical uh, uh, total education system in the country. The education system in the country comprises of primary, secondary, higher education, polytechnics, ITI and degree. In this you can very well see that the polytechnic system is after the secondary education and here uh, the programs are of two years duration. One thing which is very important to see is that the whole system from primary to the degree level has to be seen in an integrated way. That is that when we are thinking about polytechnic education we have to see that what are the knowledge, skills and attitude students have acquired at 10 plus, two, uh, 10 plus stage. Polytechnic is a system established with the objective of developing technician, technician engineers, junior engineers, technician courses are of three years of duration for 10 past students. The nomenclature of technician varies from country to country. Somewhere they say technician, somewhere they say junior technician, somewhere they say technician engineer. In our country, uh, a technician is the most prevalent uh, nomenclature. The term technician applies to a person working in an occupation requiring a knowledge of technology and related sciences between that of a skilled worker uh, or craftsman and that of an engineer or technologist. Technician's title, job and competency depends on technological development of the country. So the, we cannot say that the technician job profile or the competencies which are there will be common for all the countries. It depends on the development of the country. The highly developed countries will have technician having different competency compared to the non, uh, undeveloped countries. Technicians are engaged in functional areas of research and development, design and drawing, planning, construction, shop floor management, 
inspection and quality control, inventory control, repair and maintenance, personal management, marketing and sales. Keeping in view that the technician has to perform multiple roles as we have shown in the diagram where we have shown the manpower and the activity, it has been found that technician should have at least these skills which are required for him to perform in the industry or the community. Problem solving skills, measurement, testing and analysis of test results, drawing in skills, development of attitudes, value system, leadership qualities, self-expression, communication skills and development of interpersonal skills. These are the general skills which we have pointed out but specific skills have to be found out when we make a study of what are the jobs a technician has to occupy and what are the competencies expected from him. Now in order to develop the technicians in the polytechnic, the technician courses or diploma courses are run in the uh, polytechnics and these technician courses have certain characteristics. The technician courses would enable the student to meet the requirement of industry in addition to meeting personal and social needs, make decisions and to act as an effective member of a working group and to supervise the work of others and achieve a worthwhile combination of knowledge and skill appropriate to the vocational needs. What we want to say is that he is given theoretical and practical skills in the courses which leads development of professional skills, technical skills, personal skills, social skills and all that. Now we know that the polytechnic is there where polytechnic in the polytechnic uh, dip, uh, diploma holders are um, being uh, uh, trained and the technician courses are being run. In order to have a comprehensive idea about the institution and the curriculum and instruction, we can say that polytechnic is a system, curriculum is also a system, instruction is also a system. As has been shown here, polytechnic is a system, we have input students who are coming, they are going through a process and through the process they come out and they go to the industry. In the institution management is there, management tries to procure the resources and students are undergoing different processes to come out of the system with desired knowledge, skills and attitudes. If it is found that the students don't have the desired knowledge, skills and attitude, then a feedback is given to the system and correction is made. So therefore, a system is there whenever certain objectives are to be fulfilled. And the part of the systems are input, process, output, management, resources and feedback system. In nutshell, we can say system is defined as a collection of elements interacting with each other to achieve a common goal or objective. Input uh, elements of system are input, output, process, environment, management, resources, error detector and feedback system. As I mentioned to you that polytechnic is a system, curriculum, the courses which are being run in the polytechnic according to which the students are given learning experience for the whole program is also a system and instruction which is given for a particular subject is also a system. This polytechnic curriculum and instruction can be represented as systems and their objectives are highlighted. If we see in this, we will find that first of all we will have vision of education system. It is followed by goal of polytechnics, then it is followed by curriculum objectives and then it is followed by instructional objective. In the diagram which we have shown earlier of the system, management is there who is managing the system. As regard the polytechnic system is concerned, it is managed by the principal. As regard the curriculum of the program is concerned, it is managed by HOD and as regard the management of the subject or subjects is concerned, it is managed by the uh, teacher. This same thing I want to repeat because it is very important because management means everything. Management means that somebody has to organize, plan, direct, control, evaluate, see that the objective is fulfilled. 
So it means a teacher has to see that the objective of the instruction is fulfilled. A head of the department has to see the objective of the curriculum are fulfilled and the principal has to see that whatever objective and goal of the polytechnic is there, those are fulfilled. So principal is the leader and manager of polytechnic system. Head of the department is the manager of curriculum system of a program and teacher is the manager of instruction system for one or more subjects. In the beginning itself, I have said that curriculum involves all sort of uh, learning experiences which are given to the uh, students in the polytechnics. If we see the curriculum which are being implemented in the polytechnic or the technical institutions, we find that most of the, those curriculums are the duplication of the uh, curriculum which are being implemented in the advanced countries. And secondly, we find that the curriculum are not adapted to the local situations. And as regards the uh, design of the curriculum is concerned that uh, the seriousness which is required for developing a curriculum is not there. Mostly it is there that it evolves over the year from a narrow set of disjointed offering of subject to a comprehensive logical and chronological era of relevant student learning experiences. Earlier it was there and many times it is there that uh, you assemble the subjects and make the curriculum. That is not clear. That is not true. What is required is curriculum has to be comprehensive, it has to be logical and chronological and it should have an era of subjects or learning experiences which are to be given to the students. Normally what happens is there is a lot of misunderstanding and uh, in nomenclature of the curriculum. Some people say it as a syllabus, some people say as a course, some people say content, some people say program studies, some people say activities, planned learning experience, written plan of action, structure service of intended learning outcomes. So you can very well imagine that different people have different connotation regarding and the meaning uh, of the curriculum. Some people say it constitutes the means through which the ends of education are achieved. It refers to the totality of activities planned by institution with a view to achieve the objective and outcome of the program. These are the different uh, the definitions or ideas which are given people by people regarding the curriculum concern. But there is uh, one definition which is given by UNESCO which uh, directly applicable to the polytechnic education system and we can say according to the UNESCO curriculum is an organized program of theoretical and practical studies the successful completion of which is considered necessary to achieve specified education goals corresponding to the different levels of knowledge and qualifications. In a nutshell, we can say whatever experience we give to the student, a plan of the whatever experience we give to the students, uh, which will result in acquiring theoretical and practical knowledge, skills, and attitudes, which leads in to have a certain qualification, which will ultimately lead to to have employability, is the curriculum. Curriculum is uh, uh, affected by a lot of things. It is not that just you take out what is the there in the industry and what is expected from the technician and just you have the curriculum. Curriculum is affected by so many things. It is affected by social sciences, management, cultural, economy and industry, discipline, education, psychological development, uh, technological development, philosophy, education technology, ICT and media. So you can very well see that the curriculum which is to be designed for the polytechnic system has uh, you know inputs from all these areas which are related to science, technology, social sciences and uh, uh, industry etc. Now when we have to design the curriculum uh, for any education or training program we will have to see what are the sources. For example as it has been shown that if you go for a pre-primary school education curriculum you will have to take care of the individual requirement because all experience which you will be giving to the student will be for uh, taking into account his individual requirement. When you go for uh, designing a training program for a narrow skill course maybe ITI or uh, some other area 
uh, where a small skill has to be developed, then you will have to have a source as the job. When you have to design a program for MSc and PhD, where whole emphasis is on understanding the structure, structure of the course, in that case, you will have to take care of source as the discipline. As regards the polytechnic education concern is that we have to take into account the social demand as the source. We will have to consider what is the manpower requirement, then we will have to find out what is the manpower requirement in present time and future time, then we will have to find out what is the discipline uh, development, then we will have to see the individual requirement, we will have to see the job requirement also. So it means that the social demand model of polytechnic uh, designing curriculum for polytechnics includes the inputs of the job model, discipline model and individual need model. Before we go for the uh, design, uh, model of design of curriculum, it will be good to understand the instruction, what is mean, mean by instruction, what does it involve, because of the fact you are all teachers. Teacher has in the present time has to see how the outcome of the instruction can be achieved efficiently, effectively and creatively. As the outcome is related to the job, therefore it is very essential that the teacher should be aware of what does curriculum includes, what is the basis of including the inputs of the curriculum, how those are to be taken care while he is doing the instruction. If the teacher doesn't take into account what is expected by students to uh, do when he goes in the field and he teaches the theoretical things, it will not serve the purpose. Therefore, uh, it is very essential that uh, a teacher should first understand his role and then try to correlate that with the curriculum which is designed by a group of people for that diploma course. Instruction means a goal, direct teaching process which is more or less pre-planned, it includes objective, content, method, media and evaluation. This is very important. A teacher should know that he has to decide about the objectives, he has to decide about the content, method, media and evaluation so that the desired learning experience are given to the student and student is judged whether he has acquired the competency desired or not. The elements which we have talked about objective content method media and evaluation are built into continuous cycle of activity which constitute a process of instructional development while taking decision about each activity like content objective as well as methods are all considered what we want to emphasize here is that when you are taking decision about objective you have to take into account what facilities are available what method and media i can adopt for instruction purposes. This cyclic process of instruction des uh, design or instruction development is shown as situation analysis, selection of objectives and selection and organization of content, selection and or organization of method and media and evaluation. As it appears to film here that all errors are connected with each other. It means whenever you are taking a decision about a certain aspect, you have to take a decision about the, uh, 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 consider the other things also. As we mentioned that the objective which we call as regard in instruction, we call this as instruction objective is very important and each teacher has to uh, see that uh, what is the objective he has to fulfill. We will not go in detail about this, but we will just tell this that there are three domains, knowledge domain, skill domain, effective domain is there and there are taxonomies which gives you that what uh, type of or level of knowledge, skills and attitudes you are try trying to develop through the instruction. For example, in uh, the knowledge domain, you have knowledge, comprehensive analysis, synthesis, evaluation, creativity. So depending on the level of the uh, knowledge which you want to develop, you can plan your instruction. Methods, as, as a teacher you are very well aware that uh, the best method is where the students are involved in teaching process and the least effective method is in which the teacher only speaks and students listen. And there are different methods, lecture, tutorial, laboratory, working, um, workshop, projects, etc. And you can very well see the project 
is the uh, greatest or most effective method, lecture is the least effective method. Media also you know very well as a teacher that speaking have got 20% retention, showing is 40% and speaking, showing and doing is 80% retention. So therefore as a teacher you have to decide about the media which you will adopt which will result in uh, effective instruction. Evaluation, student evaluation is very important. Unless you have a pr proper student evaluation, you will not be sure or you will not be sure whether the students have acquired the competencies through the instruction which you wanted to have. And for that also, uh, it is very essential that the teacher uh, who is planning instruction, he should prepare table of specification which gives an idea that uh, each topic, what sort of knowledge uh, we will be trying to develop and what weight is will be given. Uh, you know very well that world class institution, if you want to think of a world class polytechnic, what is essential that faculty, curriculum and students are the most crucial things for world class polytechnic. And as regards curriculum is a very uh, heart of the polytechnic, therefore our heart of the institution which is going to be the world class, we will have to understand what is the curriculum, who needs it and for what purposes, what does it include, how to design it. This is very essential to know by each and every one who is the stakeholder in the polytechnic education system. And you know very well, students, teachers, administrators, industry, uh, community and all other in the education system are the stakeholder of the polytechnics and everybody wants that polytechnic should be a world class. Uh, another question comes is why faculty should think about curriculum and study the curriculum. Faculty plays crucial role as regard making of the institution as the world class because a, 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 it is he, the faculty is responsible for uh, the development of the students for employment and life and an active, effective leader, manager and innovator for meeting the challenges of society, establish credibility through research, publication, training and the field work helps in creating resources as per norms and standards, analyze curriculum and instruction to plan strategy for implementation. This is very important. Curriculum are given to the teacher. He should understand what is the basis of the different things which are given in the curriculum and he should be able to plan strategy for implementation. Contribute to curriculum development process for making curriculum relevant, up-to-date, innovative and dynamic. A uh, teacher is the uh, a key person uh, as regards his subject's instruction is concerned. If something has to be um, removed because of obsolescence or something has to be added in the instruction of a subject, teacher is the best person. So therefore, it is a, a teacher has a great role in making the curriculum relevant and up to date and dynamic. And therefore, it is essential that faculty should be aware of the curriculum which is being implemented in the polytechnic, what is the basis, what is desired from the teachers so that he can implement it in the instruction. As we mentioned earlier that the polytechnics are established with a certain objective in mind and the objective is to produce technicians for the industry and as we mentioned that polytechnics are not only meant for developing the robots or the professional or vocational skill people, but they are required to be developed for other uh, things also. The International Education Commission set the following four goals for education system all over the world. To develop a complete man, holistic person for meeting present and future demands of country. That is professional skills for meeting present and future requirements personal skills related to the personality, social skills related to dealing with others, learning to learn skills, skills for learning the things himself, self-learning and develop creativity in the students, encourage scientific humanism, they should have compassion and other things to develop sense of social commitment. This is also very important. So it means when polytechnics, when we are thinking about the goal of the polytechnics, then goal of the polytechnic, all these things should be kept in mind that we should give learning experience to the students in the curriculum, which includes all these aspects. And while doing uh, at this institution for the last 38 years, 39 years, we try to see that all these aspects are taken care. 
in the curriculum in some form or the other so that the boys and girls who come out of the polytechnic system have got these skills which are required for them to be successful in life, profession and life. This is a slide which gives an idea about what is required or what is there in the total curriculum. Curriculum as I shown in the first slide was shown as a house of the pigeons in which what was there students were coming and there were blocks which are there and student goes through that in the six semesters and comes out. The in the if you see the curriculum of any diploma program you will find that there are different type of subjects. One group of subjects is basic sciences other group of subjects is engineering sciences and arts another group of subjects is humanities social sciences and communication and the fourth is professional professional subjects in professional subjects you have further core subjects specialized subjects elective subjects and then projects etc if we analyze the total curriculum and see that how much is the weight is given to all these broad, broad categories to satisfy the goals which we have mentioned you will find applied sciences including computer science and environment science includes 10 to 20 uh, 10 to 15 percent engineer science and technician arts includes 20 to 25 percent humanities communication and management and social sciences includes 10 to 15 percent this also include self-study and personal development. Professional profession includes engineering science subjects related to discipline, core professional, special subjects, elective projects, industrial training and that includes 50 to 60 percent of the time. So you can very well imagine that in the curriculum which we have, we have taken into account that applied science, engineering science, humanities, self-study and personal development, professional profession. Applied science subjects are meant for developing the understanding of the engineering science as well as technology subjects as well as it helps the students to analyze the new changes which are going to come in the technology in the future. Engineering science and technician, uh, technical art subjects are includes the engineering science subjects like strength of material, applied mechanics, basic civil engineering, basic electrical engineering and other workshops etc which are required for all engineers. Humanities, communication and management and social science these helps in development of personal and social skills as well as learning to learn skills. While professional preparation gives idea about the core subjects of the profession as well as the competencies which are required by the students in, in profession to play their role in the industry and community. The ratio between theory and practice is 50 to 50 percent or any other depending on the functional requirement of the technician. If you see, go through the diagram which we have given regarding the manpower, we have seen that some technicians are working near the engineer, some working near the craftsman. The technicians who are working near the engineers, they will have requiring more knowledge compared to the technicians which are working near the craftsman. Therefore, that the course which you will be designing for the technicians which are working near the craftsman will have more practice uh, compared to the uh, knowledge while compared to the persons who are working near the engineer. They will have more theoretical input uh, rather than the uh, practical inputs. All curriculum which are being designed should have certain characteristics. They should adequately communicate the intent and purpose of all stakeholders. Those should be feasible to implement for the working environment, database, dynamic, fully articulated, integrated sequence of organized learning experience, explicit outcome, logical, chronological order, realistic, student oriented, future oriented, simple language, involved, innovative thinking, abilities, development, relevant and up to date and holistic development. What we want to say is that the curriculum which are to be uh, there they should have certain characteristics, they are relevant, up to date, dynamic, student oriented, uh, they are future oriented 
and all the things which are there, um, those should be there which make it uh, possible for implementing the curriculum. Now we will discuss about the system approach for curriculum design. We are all engineers, we know about the product design. Product design includes the development of the prototype first and then we will go for mass production. And in the prototype development, we have first stage analysis, design, implementation and evaluation. A, the curriculum design is also similar to the product design or the prototype development of a, any product. It is similar to design of a prototype of a product. It includes selection of component of specific dimensions and joining them together to make assembly. The assembly is expected to give desired performance. The steps adopted in design of a prototype of new product are analysis, design, development and evaluation. The cyclic process continues till the products meet the desired characteristics of the product. This is the process and this is being also used in the case of uh, curriculum also. Curriculum design is system approach for polytechnic programs and this includes four stages. First is identification of need and demand analysis and other, anal and other analysis. This is the first stage that is the analysis. Then we have curriculum design, then we have curriculum in, uh, impl including development of resources. It is curriculum implementation including development of resources and then is curriculum evaluation. If we find that by curriculum evaluation, curriculum is not all right, we go to the first stage, then second and third and so on. One thing you must have observed that in this all stages are linked with each other. What does it mean? That when we are thinking about curriculum design, we have to think about what is we and we have analyzed in the analysis stage and how we are going to implement it, how we are going to evaluate it. When we go for curriculum implementation, we have to see what is there in design, we have to see what is there in evaluation, we have also to see what is there in analysis. It means therefore all stages which are there in the process of curriculum evaluation, they are linked with each other and when one is taking decision about certain thing, he has to uh, think about others also. Let's say about the analysis stage, identification of need and demand analysis, it includes manpower requirement, jobs, job function, analysis job into knowledge, skill and attitudes, total knowledge, skill, attitude and competencies for a technician, constraint salient feature of course, philosophy of courses based on the goal objective of existing program, generalized or sandwich and science based. This is very important. As we have mentioned earlier, manpower study has to be done, where students will be employed, this has to be found, competencies have to be determined, once the competencies have been determined, total competencies have to be found and based on the total competencies, we will have to find out what is the goal and objective, uh, goal uh, and or the philosophy of the course which is there, which is to be implemented. Determination of total knowledge, skill and attitude required of professional, personal, social and learning to learn including prerequisite. Determining engineering science and art, basic science, humanities and communication and other subjects, knowledge, skills and attitudes and ability. So it means in the analysis stage, we will have to find out information from various sources which we will be using for the purpose of the design. Curriculum design is a statement which identifies the elements of the curriculum, states what their relationships are to each other, indicate the principles of organization and the requirement of that organization for the administrative condition under which it is to be operated. As I mentioned to you in the first diagram which was there, it was the house of the pigeons in which boxes were there. So we will have to find out what is to be put in the boxes, how much will be the size of the boxes, that is in terms of time and marks and how they will be assembled together integrated to, to, together, organized together so that it become a holistic th thing which serves the purpose of preparing the uh, uh, um, technicians for industry. Curriculum design stage includes many steps. Determine objective or goals of the engineering program. Determine curriculum objectives, outcome of program based on 
objectives, goals and total knowledge, skill, attitude derived in analysis stage and constraints of program like duration, pattern, type of course and industry role. Derive subject areas or learning experience and their detailed based on analysis stage. The curriculum objective has to be the profile, give, should give you the total profile what the students will be able to demonstrate after they have undergone the course. And based on the curriculum objective which are derived from the total knowledge skill attitudes, we come up out from the subjects or uh, areas for which learning experiences are to be given to the students. Determine instructional objective, method and media, time and marks of each subject, develop horizontal and vertical organization of subject using iterative process. Sometimes we call it develop study and evaluation scheme, determine resources based on norms and standards and strategy for implementation of the curriculum. These are the things which are to be decided in the design stage. Curriculum implementation. Once the design is there, then design should go to the institution for pilot testing and there what is there, people are to be sensitized what is there in the new curriculum which is designed and then they should deal with, it deals with the harnessing or development of resources that is physical, human, information, instructional material, labs equipment, etc. and actual implementation of curriculum in the systematic implementation stage key effectiveness areas are determined, activities are decided and responsibility are arranged to bring change. The details of the curriculum implementation will be talked by my colleagues Professor A. V. Gupta in the next session. I will uh, be covering the further curriculum evaluation stage. Curriculum evaluation stage is the last stage in the uh, systematic approach for curriculum design in which what happens is after the curriculum has been implemented, a formal eva evaluation is done. It includes monitoring during implementation stage. During this, the corrective measures are taken to improve the existing curriculum. Summative evaluation, once the curriculum has undergone corrective process for few times and get improved, a summative evaluation is undertaken for making change in the design stage. This is the last stage of the curriculum. And if you adopt a systematic approach for the curriculum design covering its analysis stage, design stage, implementation evaluation stage and that stage goes through certain times, then what will happen? The output of the curriculum design stage in institution will be relevant and up to date curriculum, effective teacher because teacher will also become effective, up to date resources which will be procured during the implementation stage and employable students and feedback mechanism set up inside the institute level for updating curriculum. So these are will be the outcome of the curriculum process which will be um, there uh, you know uh, uh, when the curriculum design is systematically implemented for many times and then in that case uh, just to summarize uh, you will have curriculum which is relevant up to date, you will have resources which are uh, needed, you will have effective teachers who are up to date in their subject matter, you will have a feedback mechanism in the system which will be trying to keep the uh, uh, curriculum dynamic. Uh, the curriculum of the technical education or vocational education uh, need to be updated frequently uh, because of the fact that the technological changes are happening uh, uh, very frequently and unless we do that we will be left behind and we will not be able to prepare the employable students. Another thing is that e each country has got its own requirement. We cannot adopt the curriculum which are implemented in advanced countries. We will have to design to our local situation. One thing what you must have observed that as regard the difference between curriculum instruction is that instruction is uh, mostly related to one subject or two subjects while the curriculum have required input of all the sources which are there. In this, you will have to have information about manpower, you will have to have people who can make the structure of the course, you will have to have people who can design the content of the subjects. That's why we say that in the, in the curriculum design and process, we will be requiring different type of people. For example, we have said first activity is analysis of present and future needs, uh, 
and need and jobs, knowledge, skill and attitude, philosophy of courses, constrain supporting knowledge and skills. For this, we require industry, eminent teachers, curriculum developer, teachers from higher institution, DT and board. For objective, writing objective, outcome, subjectivity, study and evaluation scheme, we require curriculum developer, industry, HODs, board, DT officials. When we detail content, resources of subject, method, media, evaluation strategy, uh, implementation, we require curriculum developer, HODs, teachers, board and officials. So you can very well imagine that curriculum is a group activity while instruction is an individual activity. And it is very essential that we should have a right type of persons at right stages so that they can take the decision and uh, 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 make the curriculum as per the need. Whole curriculum development process can be written in various stages, but uh, we, the curriculum which we have designed in our NITTI uh, in an experience of 38 years and 39 years of curriculum development, we have included a lot of changes and uh, uh, innovations and few of the innovations I would like to share with you. We try to experiment with multi-point entry credit system in which flexibility was provided to the students. The curriculum was made competencies based. We introduced formative evaluation. We made outcome based. That is, we wrote curriculum objectives which gave an idea about what is the competency expected in the students after he has gone through the course. And at a glance, teachers can or uh, administrator or industry people can have an idea what the students have uh, occupied or acquired during the three year, three year stage in the polytechnic. Cooperative sandwich inverted type. We have given different type of models for institutions, polytechnic. Some are sandwich type, some are science based uh, models, some are inverted type, some are sandwich type. We have introduced entrepreneurship development, we have introduced environment awareness, project industry based and practice oriented we have introduced. Soft skill and communication training is a part of the curriculum. Values development is also a part of curriculum. Teaching learning process is made student oriented. ICT uses uh, uh, promoted and a greater emphasis is given on independent learning and part of the course. Core curriculum is, is competency based and is uh, made to be as a uh, the fun. Creating original curriculum design is a fun, challenge and creative game available to curriculum designer, teacher, parent, students, administrators, industries and others who are willing to think and imagine beyond ordinary limits. Polytechnic education is quite costly compared to general education and need to be changed frequently for taking in account of changes in industry technology and manpower etc. You are the best judge what you want to teach to the students and how you can prepare them for future. In nutshell we can say that whole curriculum which we have designed is trying to develop in students the uh, um, what employer expects from students to uh, demonstrate during as uh, interview for employment and some of the things which we have found uh, from the employer is personality. The personality has to be likable. He has to have a positive attitude. He has to have a dedication and perseverance in doing jobs. He has to have a good English communication, writing, reading and speaking. He has to have creativity and he has to be current knowledge skill in the field. So these are the uh, things, the core things which are required to be developed in the student so that when he goes for employment, he is accepted. Just to summarize as regards the curriculum design it concern, I will say curriculum design is an iterative process. It includes determining needs, specifying curriculum objective, structuring the education program, implementing the program and evaluating, reviewing and revising the objective, program content and implementation process for their relevance, effectiveness and efficiency. Thanks and good wishes to you in your role. Say with me, I love myself and proud of me. I love my polytechnic. I love my profession. I love my students. My duty is to make students employable. My role is to remain up to date 
in my field. My role is to think curriculum up to date, make think, thinking curriculum up to date. My role is to be education entrepreneur. My role is to devise, think new daily and introduce in the curriculum of the student. Thank you very much.